Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! So I gotta say, this movie is where I first crushed on uh, Mia Jovovich. Oh, Jovo- I know. Jovo- wow. Jovo- we, did, we talked about that on, when we Jovo- did Fifth Element. Jovo- yeah. Jovo- 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 multipass. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I recall, like, uh, what is this, 93? Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was a sophomore in high school. I actually tracked down her first album at this weird store. The Divine Comedy. Yeah, it's yeah. a good it fucking album. It is a good album. album. It so is. Her it as really a musician? Yeah, yeah, and she's good. The, I've the, only ever heard her singing with Tool or the, Pussifer. The song yeah. that she's, like, playing on the guitar towards the end of the movie, that's a verse from one of her songs yeah. on the album. The one where they're all like, yeah, that song's bad. Aliens, Aliens yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, by blasted. the way, if, if, uh, if, if you didn't know, <laughs> Oh, by now, what we're doing, um, we are doing uh, Dazed and Confused. Yes, from 1993. Uh, I believe y'all voted on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did uh, yeah. kids the came in? What, uh... I don't. I don't have them handy. Oh, but no, it, no, I don't. It won. I, I don't it know barely beat out Ferris Bueller. By, by oh, a that's of right. It, yeah, yeah, it was. I. It was. Uh... That. That's a hard call. Because both of those... Oh, by the way, I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. <laughs> and I'm Nathaniel. All right, so... F- and you are listening to Half Movies, Will Game. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, um, <laughs> if you didn't know that, sorry. Yeah. You should stop. <laughs> by this point... Go listen to their other episodes. People, people can drink now for four years since this movie came out. Mm-hmm. So, fuck your spoilers. True. Uh, well, if we're going to talk about age, what was this, 1976? The movie was set in 1976. I think it was no, 76. 76. That means that all of those characters who graduated are forty-two. You no, know, they all, they're sixty years old now. The characters, the not characters, characters themselves, the characters would be sixty years old because they would have we did the been math. born in like nineteen sixty. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of them, yeah, except for the freshmen. Think about those tight pants your grandma squeezed into <laughs> with the wrench holding I love it. That. Oh. Yeah, with the pliers. Laying back. I, I remember so after seeing this movie, like the next year, some of the girls on the cheerleading squad, they would like purposely buy the like yeah. overly skinny jeans to and do that same thing. The high waisted skinny jeans, which are oddly enough coming back. They are, yeah. And it's I, I have proof. Kinda, it depends it depends on your shape. Yeah. I, I see some people almost every day who pull it off mm-hmm. yeah. and they pull it off very well. And then I see others try and do it. And you're like, eh, nope. <laughs> this movie to me is the, th- there's many other high school movies out there, but this one from beginning to end to me is a, the ultimate timeless high school movie. Oh, this is a great movie. The, whoever wrote this and I didn't stick around through the credits cause that's not my job. That's Dusty's Richard Linklater. Thank you. To, uh, to figure out who it was, had a true understanding of of all parts of the high school experience. He wanted to do the inverse of a John Hughes film. You know, John Hughes film was like all drama and what's going on in this one specific character. And then yeah. with the other characters around them, like, you know, Molly Ringwald and everybody from Breakfast Club. This was more... This was kind of like a love actually of almost like high school proportions, but without being love actually. I would say this is perfectly packaged nostalgia. There is yeah. there is a point where every I'll I'll just say for America, American American yeah. and not uh, even just that system. era because I I did I wasn't even I, born. I, yeah, then. I was I and was it in was, the nineties. It was mm-hmm. spot on for me in high school and. There was still hazing. Oh yeah, I, yeah. There was why, brutal hazing. Every everything that went on in this movie. There's, there's my not brother. More isn't there? My they, brother they is seven years that. older than I am. So everything that they were doing, like mm-hmm. he and his buddies, this was like watching my brother and his friends only in the mid to late eighties. You know, just t- ten years later. Yeah. So. I remember this movie and television and, you know, legend always telling you as a kid growing up that you're going to get hazed the fuck out of your when you go into your freshman year or whatever. Mm-hmm. My my town had none of that. We had no hazing. I it was grew a, up it was in a, a hillbilly city, part though. of the yeah. of the planet. There was there was hazing at my high school. Yeah. It was yeah. it was it was 
chopped off at like the knees by uh, I think probably my sophomore year, but mm-hmm. it, there was still some hazing going. On. I mean, no, I remember made you tough, made you strong. Yeah, I remember. I remember the the scene when I was a freshman. The seniors, uh, the kids that were going into football, they would get duct taped onto the benches in the locker room or get thrown into the in, into the lockers and then like peed on. That yeah. was part of the hazing process. That's terrible. Or they were depanced yeah. and thrown into the girls' locker room. It's, it's good for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never experienced any of that. I never saw it. I, as a middle schooler, I was dreading being put into trash cans or put into <laughs> lockers or or being tortured like that. And a certain, it never happened. A certain amount of of hazing is is a very good thing. You you want you want to find your limits. You don't want to become an adult passively. You you want to know what's right and wrong. You want to know how you can absorb damage before your entire fortunes in life depend on it. Yeah. You know, when all when yeah. all you have to deal with is a couple bruises and a little bit of humiliation. And that is all you really have to deal with. Yeah. Like that movie just takes you back to that time where you had no responsibilities other than, oh, I've got to take the trash off. Oh, my God. And, and all that drinking. <laughs> oh, and, my God. So much drinking. All you had to do was go to a party yeah. and hang out with your friends and deal with the the drama of i've got a girl but i'm not that into her but i am into this girl or i'm young and now there's an older girl is into me and mm-hmm. yeah. how do i get beer <laughs> or or how do i get noticed to be on like yeah. this the the football team or the baseball there, team there is, is somewhere squad. that every human that has been through the american school system can hang their hat on in this movie there there is a point of connect which i think is amazing considering like the dreck that's pumped out as coming of age movies um, this, this was actually incredibly insightful as, as far as I see. Um, like I really love, uh, the, the, the guy's fight, the caveman looking kid. Oh, uh, O'Banion. Um, no, 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 um, no, 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 no. You go Adam the, Goldberg. The nerd one. Yeah. yeah Adam, Adam Goldberg. Goldberg. His fight. <laughs> yeah. They, at the end where he, he, you know, he just took the, you know, oh, someone's smoking reefer and the, yeah. the greaser, you know, yeah. there at the end he was like, oh, Beats oh, oh so am I a bad person for smoking weed? Yeah. And, uh, and then, and he, then just, he works up his courage. And yeah. He's like, has another <laughs> drink and then dumps <laughs> the, the beer on him. him. You know, he, I was thinking about something when we were watching this last night and he was sitting there right after he got like harassed by that guy. And he's sitting there and he was talking to his two friends about how he's going to go punch that guy. He's just got to go punch him. And they're like, why do you get to do this? Because if I don't, I'm going to stew about this for the rest of my life. And Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, he was telling the truth. Yeah. Not everybody's like that, but he was very self-aware and knew exactly how neurotic of an asshole he was. (laughs) And if he had not punched that guy. Or just tried something. Or tried something, he would have thought about that for the rest of his life and it would have brought down his self-esteem and he might have ended up being a weaker person. when he. It it would have been a George McFly back to the future thing. That's the thing thing. that uh, a lot of that's missing, I I think, in, in a modern culture is that trying and failing isn't the end of the world. Getting your ass beat isn't the end of the world yeah um it's it's actually it's, it's really good for personal growth yeah. i mean i i yeah I I've, I've lost a couple fights in my life i mean i'm a big guy and i have very quick hands but you develop that you don't start with that the only fights that i think i've ever gotten into in my life involved the swords and i lost a few of them that so was a, like that was uh, a oh, are we talking I, like yeah. formal <laughs> that was a, i was a fencer oh okay yeah. okay no that's it. You know, never I've, gotten to any of I've, I've, I've lost a couple fist fights. Just, yeah. yeah, I grew up in banjo yeah. territory. Oh, I, boxing. I did yeah. boxing. Yeah, I, well, I didn't grow up in... It, my, my fights were more because I was called, you know, just belittled and called fat so much that it just it ended up in fights. Um, but uh, I've, I lost a couple there, the first few, you know, because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. This is how you learn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You guys had very different upbringings than me. <laughs> <laughs> I have soft lover's hands, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> my parents were of the, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, <laughs> mine were, variety. maybe not as much as yours, but mine were along the same, along the same line. Yeah. Uh, my dad was always, if I had, you know, was complaining about something, it was like, it was always, uh, are, is it broken? Are you bleeding? Are you dead? If not, go shake it off. Well, one thing I really like about this movie is the acceptance that happens afterwards. That like, is really good. If, because it's not, it's not a beat down. This isn't a gang initiation. This is, okay, we're going to give you some hell and then we're going to bring you in. This is yeah, more this of is your a, initiation. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, yeah, they totally beat that dude's bottom after his baseball game. Yeah, but then mm-hmm. they're like, and then they got drank yeah. beers with him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, you want to come out with us later? Yeah. Are you in the the they chubby got him kid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, well, the chubby kid who was getting his feel on at the middle school <laughs> yeah. party. He when they beat him and he's leaving, they toss him a beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was great. Yeah. And they're like, why'd you waste a beer? No, I didn't, man. I, you know, he he did his thing. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> I'm that, just saying, we, okay, we need more of that. Okay, that skinny, blonde middle school kid. Oh, the boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't he look like a young David Spade? Yeah, kind of. I yeah. can see that. Um, I, was just I can see it, but I don't... Picturing him I growing up into David I love, Spade. I love those <laughs> black and white lined over the belly button pants he was wearing with oh, his yeah. t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the precursor to hammer pants. <laughs> now... The, now uh, I guess it depends on where you go, went to school in the in the in the country. Um, so, like when I was that age, I was already in high school. We had freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and it looked like the way I saw because I, I rewatched the movie earlier today. It looked like it was uh, the years. middle school was was seventh, eighth, and like ninth, and mm-hmm. then you get into high school, which is sophomore, yeah, that's junior, what senior. I grew up in. No, what it was talking about was okay. Well, first off, have we 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 already established that we all had a ninth through twelfth, right? I think we had a conversation about this in another episode. Yeah, I, I had no, nine, you guys all of us were. Yeah, I was nine. Middle 10, school 11, ends 12. at nine. No, Not me. so you middle school ended 10, 11, 12. At, you had junior high. Then. Yeah, my okay. junior high was seventh and eighth, and then high school was ninth through twelfth. So I grew up. We didn't have junior high. We had middle school and high school. But then uh, I gathered from this movie that they had. 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th in high school because the middle school kids from 8th grade were graduating and being brought in as freshmen. And freshmen oh, yeah, is I guess. Okay. They even refer to the other girl as a sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. Okay. Which means that the ones who are in charge of the show or, or the whatever, we're they're juniors, juniors going to become seniors, seniors, seniors next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was what I'm gathering. All right, we yeah. put that one to rest. That's good. <laughs> I thought it was really funny that the coach's little thing was, you know, the 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 note the voluntary i'm gonna be a good boy note yeah oh uh, my god the pledge that was such a big deal at the time those coaches brought back so many fucking memories like bad memories i got along <laughs> i hated the coaches yeah i had some problems with one of my coaches but then there's another couple that were fucking cool as shit yeah, yeah. just the, i just started wrestling the the coach that was the asshole that was the one the other the one that was cool was uh, i was all right with that but uh yeah well, there was i think that i think I think Linkletter went out to my old high school and got like the coach for that <laughs> that whole scene because it was where the one that was being pissed off about not about not having the letter yet. That was my high school coach. Did any of you particularly personally relate to any single character in this? Um, because I I know the one. Yeah. There's one character in this movie was almost a carbon copy of High School Me. No, th- there wasn't a Matthew there, yeah. but there's rarely a matthew yeah there there wasn't really a dusty in there for me it was the guy who was throwing the house party oh, oh that, really? <laughs> that the look the hair mm-hmm. the attitude the stoner girlfriend the the collection of paraphernalia the, <laughs> I, I wasn't rich so but i didn't but my mom was actually also cool so whenever i threw a party she would just find somewhere to be uh, it was actually pretty cool in that regard, but that character, like, who's ba- who's Bowen Bosses? Yours, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was me. I, the whole time I'm watching it, remembering, yep. Yep. So there's an interesting little thing with that character. That ca- The guy that played that character um, was such a problem during the filming of the movie that he and Matthew McConaughey actually got into an actual fist fight during filming, like, multiple Who times. Won? Um, so Matthew McConaughey's character was not even supposed to have that. It was only supposed to be in like two scenes in the whole movie, but because the guy kept like g- losing favor with the director, yeah. Matthew McConaughey kept getting more and more scenes to fill up. So the ending of the movie where they're on the 50 yard line, it's not supposed to be McConaughey. It's supposed to be the kid that, you know, was going to have yeah. the house party giving that speech. So, uh, yeah, Matthew McConaughey, he, he did a good, everything was pretty much ad lib with his whole McConaughey. Part. This is... Whatever, whatever yeah. his name is, this is to me like the the iconic role for him. Yeah, like mm-hmm. his all of the quotes that I associate with Matthew McConaughey are from this movie. Be all a lot right, cooler all right, if you did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about high school girls, man. 
Uh, I get older. <laughs> they stay the same. You know, age. now at my age, that used to be funnier. <laughs> now it's just kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but you all knew that guy, right? Yeah, yeah. We we all knew that guy. There was there was that guy on campus. But yeah. the funny thing is. Uh, in real life, McConaughey was like the youngest out of that whole group playing the oldest character out of that group. Well, I mean, the middle school kids were clearly well, I mean, of, kids. The, of the high school, of the high school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They at least did a good job casting kids in the kids role. The teenagers, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause most of the teenagers were born, uh, 1970, 1973. Yeah. So Man, it took me a moment to pick out Ben Affleck. Really? Was yeah. it because his teeth weren't fixed yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so skinny. Or Cole Hauser was one that I had never really recognized that it was him in this movie. Mm-hmm. I've only really known him from later movies. And I'm watching him like, <gasps> right? Oh, so young. Oh, everybody's so young. Isn't Renee Zellweger's in this movie? Yeah. Uh, is a has a bit part in it. Yeah. Um, Joey Lawrence Adams. Yeah. I love the incredibly awkward high school dance. The oh god, mm, the just Chevy. Chevy. Yes. incredibly <laughs> awkward. And then that's the middle school dance. Mm-hmm. Wanna... Yeah, yeah. The high schoolers didn't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, in the back room with your hand up a girl's shirt, like that was that was middle school. And when he's leaving, and she's like, ah, no, no, <laughs> and she, then she looks disappointed. Yeah, but I also liked that all the girls in that most of the girls in that dance were taller than yeah. the guys that they were. No, dancing it was fantastic. With. That was a nice touch. It shows the 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 terror of the early teens so well, like because at that age you're not you're not confident in your own prowess. You you have no sense of your own power. You don't know anything about yeah. you yet. You, yeah, you don't know about you. You don't know what you're capable of. All you really are is a bundle of fear and bravado. <laughs> and this movie showed that so well. Just painful inexperience. It it was sometimes it was like. Even sitting now, years later, and rewatching it, sitting there is just like, ah, oh, this, this, this was, this was a thing. Yeah, this yeah. was a whole movie. Was this was a thing? This it's, was, yeah. I think it's timeless. Yeah, it, it, like I wasn't even alive in the seventies, but everything that happened in that, I could relate to. Even like the old guy. Oh, you're going to be on the North Bay team next yeah, year, yeah. right? You guys can make state. <laughs> oh, we're, we're counting on you. We're Nate. We're counting yeah. on you, man. I'm like, who, why are you? Both of those actors are dead now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. I like I like the when the when the kid went in to buy the beer the the mm-hmm. the store yep. owner he was just talking to him and and the kid is just regurgitating everything that that Matthew McConaughey's character had said. Well, you see that that's part of what gets missed is that when when something like that happens, you're you're learning, you're a sponge, mm-hmm. yeah, and without acceptance and standing on your own rights, because kids are naturally cruel. You're never going to get away from that. No, um, but. If you do take your licks, you can begin to learn how how things really function. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah, that kid had a I think that kid was essentially being set up in the story to be the, I gro- think if, the cool guy. If I had to hang my hat years. on anyone, it would probably yeah. be that kid. Uh-huh. That I would say that's the closest to me. Because, yeah. you know. Well, initially, the movie wasn't really supposed to focus a lot on him. It was supposed to focus on the the more football kids than than yeah. that kid. But uh, Linklater, it was good that it didn't. yeah, Linklater saw him and said, "Hey, I really like your look." He had the, the he actually still had the long hair. He just looked like a geeky kid, and he's like, "Okay, let's, God, I just wanted to give him a rubber band." Let's move this whole fucking movie, movie a little bit around <laughs> this, and I and I was really happy because initially the the initial. Um, the original idea for the movie, and I'm glad that the director didn't go with this, uh, he wanted to examine a single day in the life of a group of high schoolers, which he did keep with that. But the original part of that was going to be four high school guys uh, in Le Mans listening to an eight-track tape of ZZ Top's Fandango. Uh, the whole movie was going to take place in a car with the characters driving around listening to that um it sounds the, like a fun movie yeah the director of photography described the concept that it would have been two shots one of a guy putting in an eight track of zz top's fandango and then the others uh just driving around and talking the whole time with the entire soundtrack just playing behind kind of sounds them. like clerks yeah you know, yeah. Just yeah easy location but so i'm glad it, it it moved from that and went to what it is i myself having not known that once when I considered myself more of a writer, wrote a screenplay that was almost that exact same con- uh, uh, content, except it was to 
uh, a mixtape of '90s songs. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I I like the undercurrent of the whole movie of everyone is unsure. Yeah, it does. It does. It plays well. Yeah, um, because I think everyone has felt that, mm-hmm. and especially at that age, God, you you know shit about fuck. You know nothing. And, and, and it did. It was showcased well with everybody. I mean, you're supposed to think that that seniors at that point in time in your life are like they know what's going, what what they're going to do with their life. They know what's going what, on. What, what's her name? Parker Posey. Oh was my fan god! Fucking Harry, bitches. <laughs> Ep, lick it. <laughs> Everyone can lick it. Just, what are you looking at, bitch? <laughs> she was. Oh. <laughs> Let me, <laughs> all of you. That was a quote. <laughs> but I liked how it showed that even like the, the people that when you're in high school when you're when you're freshmen and you're looking up to the seniors, even the seniors don't know what they're what they're going to be doing or what they want to do. And that was showcased well with, you know, the the quarterback kid. You know, he's like, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know if I'm going to come back next year and play football. Well, he was the most forward thinking I think of the entire yeah. bunch. Mm-hmm. He even like very at the end of the movie had a quote that I think encapsulated everything that this movie is ultimately saying and that is if i ever start referring to these as the best years of my life remind me to kill myself well and then you had uh and well then you had matthew mcconaughey's little nuggets of wisdom at the end too you know where he was like just l-i-v-i-n man (laughs) just 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 living yeah (laughs) you know so a little side note on that the whole bit about that that speech that he gives McConaughey's father had actually passed during the filming of the movie. You said that right this time, by the way. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and I'll probably fuck it up on the next time. I'll call you. <laughs> so they had to take a, a, a break during during filming, so he could go and and do the do the the funeral and everything. And when he came back, that was there had been a lot more behind the scenes stuff with the other actor. So McConaughey was put into the, into the, for that final scene and that speech about L I V L I V I N live in, that was just because of, you know, his dad. Yeah. Uh, and it was kind of a neat thing. And you can, you can kind of see and McConaughey has said in, in interviews that like he broke down and I see, you can see where the, the editor cut before McConaughey huh. like starts crying again, which is, it, it's, it's a moving, it's a moving point in my opinion. I just like the casual brutality of the era. Has anyone else ever destroyed mailboxes? Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Oh, I got a fun story. There's so a <laughs> Go ahead. So in the month of October 1997, I got a brand new group of friends because that was my senior year of high school. It just started. I moved to a new high school. I, it's first three years I did it one, and then I decided I didn't want to be at that one, and I got a transfer. I had almost no friends at all at the new school until I met a bunch of people at a party. And I met these people at a party, Uh, in late September, and then the first time I ever hung out with them was October 1st. And we went on a trip to the mall after school. And then one thing led to another, and instead of going to the mall, me and one of my new friends were in the back of a truck of the Matthew McConaughey character, essentially Mm -hmm. taking us over the river to another town. While we are in the tunnel that goes out into the river, the truck blew up. And yeah, hang, on, hang on, what do you mean the truck blew the up? The truck that we were in caught on fire and exploded in the Mobile Tunnel. So me and the guy who were laying in the back of the truck unsafely jump off, run up. And Did they manage to bring it to a stop? They, got, they brought right. it to a stop and then it exploded. They Jesus. didn't even know it was on fire but because they weren't actually wow. even watching the road while they were driving. But we smelled something in the back. We kept knocking on the window and pointing forward. And then he's like... Oh shit! <laughs> the truck was on fire. Anyway, that was the beginning of a friendship that was really awesome. And well, the entire month, we did exploding a, things will we'll build. We did a lot of drugs. Yeah, and <laughs> we did a, got up to a lot of bad things. But I was the oldest member of this group of friends. And then I remember I tended to always kind of be the nanny on that regard. So I would not always engage in some of the more crazy things that they did. So anyway, fast forward, Halloween, nineteen ninety seven. We're all at this party, and for some reason, I decided that I was not going to drink or do any intoxicants that evening. I'm just going to hang out with my buds. And then a whole bunch of them got into a geo tracker. Oh, okay. wow. Uh, listening to Crystal Method oh. and <laughs> driving around an expensive neighborhood, bashing mailboxes, busting out street lamps, those decorative ones and mm-hmm. little subdivisions, and they all get arrested. And I wasn't with them. <laughs> and I remember 
well, that month's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Similarly, uh, I it was I was driving my parents. And I think I've talked about the suburban that I flipped and rolled uh, on a, on another one of our episodes. But before that happened, uh, we had I probably put in like nine or ten of my friends into the same suburban. And we're just driving around, driving around. And one of the guys, Ben, he's like, hey, let's go down and down. There's, there's some there's some like trash cans and mailboxes. Let's go ahead and knock these. I was like, okay, no big deal. So we start taking this this big 1977 Suburban and like swerving to hit mailboxes and trash cans, hitting them all over the place, breaking things. Somebody had put, had filled their yep. trash can with bricks to go to the dump. And I hit that that trash can with the front end of my parents suburban. no more radiator <laughs> no the front end just kind of the, the the fender just kind of had a big dent in it Ugh. uh the next day uh i think i came clean with this to my parents many many years later and if i didn't then i guess i'm coming clean now um <laughs> <laughs> the next morning my dad's out front wash you know he goes to wash because like every sunday morning he would go to wash uh, the car and he comes in. He's like, what happened to the car? I was like, I don't know. We were in a parking lot and we came back out from the store and somebody had hit the car. Well, years later I told him, you know, I think I did told him what exactly had happened. Um, yeah, it has a very good sized dent by hitting nothing, but <laughs> it, one of those, you know, like 50 gallon drum trash cans filled with, with bricks. I, uh, I never did that with a car. <laughs> but one thing I did do that has a, a parallel on the movie is we used to drive around in uh, my friend Scout International, oh, those which are great. had a PA system in it, in the middle of the night through the mall and taunt mall security by driving over the, uh, you know, all those little planter mm -hmm. areas like mm -hmm. that are in between with all the nice things. And we just are <laughs> right over that. And then, of course, you know, after about 15 minutes of that, they'd figure out where we were. And... Uh, and we had a PA, so I would be hanging out the side of this thing that's, you know, just catching a significant amount of air as we go over these large, bumpy objects, just mocking these poor, poor, hardworking mall security you, guys. You, you do that now because you have a PA in your car. No, 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 no. I've mellowed in my old age. <laughs> I, I, I only, I don't tease at random anymore mm -hmm. or, or cause trouble. I, I wait for okay. someone to fuck up. And then I and they just point it out mercilessly. I, I think there's a little more justice in how I do it now. <laughs> I had a, I had a 1977 uh, full time four wheel drive Dodge mustard. No, it was mustard yellow, but it was not mustard yellow. It was more like baby shit yellow. It's funny how a nostalgic movie <laughs> makes us nostalgic, isn't it? Yes. Uh, all and those it had cars. A system. All the cars uh, were great. Oh. Man. Being a car fan, I, I loved know. every every car I saw in that movie. They were all so gorgeous. I wanted all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted that 50 cent gas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 56 cents per gallon. Fuck, for I would have settled for the 60 cent cigarettes. <laughs> and the dollar ninety nine sixteen dollar weed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus, that was a half ounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. They were, oh, God, just so many memories. Uh, I love that scene where the guy goes in to get beer and comes running out. And then you think he's robbed him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's and like, no, guy, I paid. And then a guy comes yeah. up with a gun. You're like, what? What the hell just happened? No, I paid. <laughs> <laughs> and there were, there were a couple of scenes that, was, you know. <laughs> I love that he fired the gun after that. I know. Also. And then like kind of. He off rounds after the kid. <laughs> And kind of on that, I think there was a couple cars. If you look closely at some of the cars, like some of the trucks, you can see gun racks with actual guns. It is Texas. Yeah, I, well, I know, but still, it's like now you would never see that. I mean, you wouldn't even see if like ninety three. I remember going to school and seeing some people with like you know rifles in the in their gun racks. So about ninety three, ninety four, and then after that, it just kind of. There were a couple kids in stopped. in my high school who, uh, you know, had pickups and you know guns. They just locked their truck. Most of the actors did not have Texan accents, except no. the main dude. The main dude did. And that was about it. Nobody else did. Yeah. I didn't, I've, I never knew until I started doing the, the research on here that this was, this was supposed to be in Texas. I had no idea. I Rebel liked Gray. that they didn't. Because, <laughs> no idea. Um, uh, because it makes it more universal, a yeah. universal experience movie. So I think that was the correct call. Ah. All right. 
Yeah, there all was, right, there all right, some, all right. There were some nods, like the team being the Rebels. Yeah. With Rebel Gray and... And everyone having a gun. Everyone having a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the great state of Texas. God bless it. <laughs> So there were a lot of people that actually at the time that were vying to be in this movie um, that are that are really big now. Like Vince Vaughn auditioned for Benny. Uh, he was turned Which down. Which was Benny? Uh, Benny was... I think it was Cole Hauser. No. No. I don't know who Cole Hauser is either. Yeah, Benny was who Cole Hauser ended yeah, up yeah, playing. Yeah. Um, Which one was that? All right. So the group, the the main. Okay. There's the he main the guy. Red head. The, the, he was the redhead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The curly red hair. The guy yeah. who actually did have the PA who was yelling out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I kind of liked him too. Yeah. He he got the role instead. Claire Danes auditioned for the role of Sabrina. Glad uh, she didn't. But was considered too classy by, by the director. Ashley Judd also auditioned for the role of Jody. Okay. Uh, Universal Studios demanded... Uh, already established young stars and offered the role reportedly that of reluctant football star Randall Pink Floyd to Brendan Fraser, actually. Oh, yeah. That would have been, been great. Brendan Fraser would have been great. Because he no longer wanted to do high school type films. I got to say, though, that that the star quarterback, he was skinny as fuck. Yeah. Well, like, everybody where was. was. His muscle? Everybody was. Everybody was skinny as fuck, except for the, the one chubby kid. It could have been, just been and fat. that chubby kid wasn't yeah. all that chubby. No, no, but for the time he <laughs> yeah. was, he was, he was chubby. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Berkeley also uh, went in this. John Favreau, um, Mira Sorvino, Ron Livingston all wanted to be in on the movie, uh, but did not get cast. Mm. Uh, and actually, McConaughey was not originally cast in it. But as the story goes, he had approached the casting director uh, in a bar of the Radisson where they were, where the cast was staying, <laughs> and got him so up. Nice. drunk with the casting director, they got kicked out of the bar. And he said, "Why don't you come down tomorrow and hang out?" <laughs> and he just got the part of Wooderson of when the has. rest is yeah. history. Man, Wooderson was so cool and so lame, like. <laughs> He's actually, <laughs> McConaughey has gone on in interviews and said that he has based that entire character, how he speaks, how he acts, how he looks at life, after his brother. <laughs> that is that is his brother, he, he has said. <laughs> Which is kind of weird knowing that, you know, that line that says, I, I get older and they just stay younger and that that's based off of a family Thing. I just knew those people. I remember yeah. being like a junior and senior in high school and the girls all being like, oh, I'm dating like this 21 year old. And I remember people were like, oh, that's so cool. But now you look back and you're like, man, that dude. What fucking, fucking yeah. creep. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Like you look back and like, oh, yeah. yeah, God, you just couldn't score it with girls your age, could you? Well, I imagine as life moves on, like the, the void gets different. But when you're when you're that young, like. There does need to be protections there, you know, because you, again, you know nothing at that age, nothing. So it is, it is way creepy. Like, well, 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 even at the time, Matt, I like my hackles raised when I first saw this movie at Matthew McConaughey. I was like, how long you, been, how long you been out, buddy? Well, I mean, well, so I always three, four at, years. What's going I, on? There? I looked, I always looked at McConaughey's character as he was like nineteen, like he was like a year, like he was. Not the. I thought he was twenty one because. Oh wait, you can buy booze at eighteen in Texas, can't you? Oh, well, you, you used to at be that able point to. time. Yeah. So that changes things because I thought he was twenty one because he was buying booze for others. Yeah. But that's through a Pacific Northwest lens. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think he was early twenties and still that, just. That's kind of what I got hanging too, around. You know? Yeah. Okay. Because I know I was at um, uh, Banyan's Ban Banyan. Uh, oh, Banyan. Yeah, oh, Banyan. Yeah, yeah. He, he he had flunked. So he was going to yeah. be like 19. So I figured he and McConaughey's character were the same like age. Like contemporaries? Uh, yeah. Well, no, no. Because McConaughey men basically mentioned Wooderson had been out a few years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess I just didn't Whatever. pick up on yeah, he that. He was a creepy okay. old guy. Older. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked it. Dri driving up. <laughs> that driving hair. Up, oh, my God. Driving up to Valiant get fucking hair. Aeros Aerosmith tickets. <laughs> yeah. Priorities, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's... The conflicts in this movie are so personal, but none of them are huge. Yeah. Oh, no. Dominant I, male monkey motherfucker. <laughs> I got to have a party. Oh, no. I got to show off to this guy, to this bully. Oh, yeah. no. I got to get beer. Yeah. Oh, no. We got to get Aerosmith tickets. Oddly <laughs> enough, uh, all, this, all the scenes that had beer, 
um, they were swapped out. There was actual beer. So most of them, when they, when they were showing that they were drunk, pretty much everybody was drunk. Yeah. Oh, I believe and, that. Yeah, you can't buy that kind and, of acting. And uh, uh, Linklater didn't want pot on set. But that got swapped out also. Oh yeah. So by the by the end of the party, everybody is hammered, <laughs> just smashed, hammered, and high at the same time. And I'm that was to me a very poignant part of the whole experience was kegs dry. Mm-hmm. I liked, yeah, yeah. I liked the morning after yeah. the whole progression of oh we're we're keeping going, we're, we're keeping going, keep going. We're keeping I'm going. getting my third win, but, boys. Because yeah. when that happens in the movie, I felt the same as when it would happen at parties. The yeah. party's mm-hmm. over. The movie's over. Yeah, the party's over. Like, Everything's oh, coming to an end yeah. and I don't want it to stop mm-hmm. yet. You know? I love the casual littering. The what? The casual littering. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the three kids are walking through the neighborhood and he throws up the bottle. Yeah, and they run. <laughs> <laughs> I uh do they still do that? Like uh the, the emptying of the books? That would probably be like that would get you in trouble was, where they're throwing all their papers at the see, end of the when school I, when I when I was in high school, by the time I became a freshman, so that was ninety one when I became a freshman, um we the lockers were no longer a thing. They were taken out. You had a set of books for home and you had a set of books for they were in class. Oh, had, we had lockers. We did not school. have lockers. Yeah. Like junior high for me was the last time we had lockers. Is that a thing? They don't have lockers anywhere? I know, I know down in Phoenix. Does at anyone know anyone Moon Valley High School? They didn't have lockers anymore hmm. because there was too much of a possibility for drugs or weapons even then. So yeah. they pulled them out. The whole like locker bay was taken out. So weird. Yeah, I got we, nothing. Yeah, my my high school didn't have like down the halls. They didn't have lockers in the halls at all. Even that was. If I remember I correctly, saw that in school in movies, and I'm like, oh, that that would that's kind of cool. Yeah, that would be handy. Yeah, I think my high my I think my city had twelve high schools that I could well roughly about twelve maybe, and I know one if not two of those in the bad part of town had security scanners. Well, hmm. you know, metal detectors. Mm-hmm. Other than that, no. And oh shit, I remember this. My mom did some teaching, and one of the schools that she worked at was a middle school where they took all the doors off the lockers and made all the kids wear have clear backpacks they were no Jesus. longer yeah wow because apparently that middle school had had some crime problem wow. i don't even think that middle school's still there but yeah jesus i yeah. mean <laughs> i just want to break some you know some mailboxes that's all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, times are different mm-hmm. now. Very I different. suspect that a lot of people who are significantly younger than us won't be able to relate to this movie as yeah. much. Yeah, not at all. It doesn't have cell phones. It doesn't so have the interconnectedness the, uh, of it. I will say the awkwardness is still there. Everyone, I think everyone the awkwardness has, is going to be, awkwardness be prevalent yeah. here. all the time going forward. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, that's just a function of age. But now there's that whole extra digital layer of socializing that just yeah because in the movie it, yeah. it was you know mcconaughey's character he pulled up to the to the diner was like hey there's a party out here yeah. you know the, the the moon park you know tell it tell everybody and now it would just be like hey let me just get on facebook and send it to everybody and never have to say a word yeah so i agree with you there i mean if this movie were done today it would be a vastly different movie but i think what you said about the awkwardness would still be prevalent I, th- I in think the there's movie. somewhere there's somewhere people who are way younger than us could still hang their hat on but uh yeah it's schools have gotten grim man yeah. I, I, I i miss the concept of i don't like you you don't like me punch drink yeah. yay we're friends yeah you know? i would not want to be a kid in high school today no not really i honestly wouldn't want to be a kid today <laughs> at all well there's that too well because we're you and i are in that that same little weird bracket of the uh, last of the Gen Xers, yeah, the last yeah. of the Gen Xers. That whole that what's now considered a Zennial, um, a what now? Zennials that are born at like from like 1977 to 1983. We still had everything that was analog, and we were just getting into the digital world. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, I know. That, I that's know. the it's, end of the Gen I, X. I, yeah, that's me. Like, yeah. I know. yeah, yeah. You're yeah. in that. You're you're on. Think on on just on the other. I was side 79. Of it. Yeah, they, okay. they they have to yeah. be at least a decade. Otherwise, the, these micro things are just bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Well, part of the concept is that your formative years included both no technology mm. and technology, and that's a very limited period of time. Yeah, my as, first phone was rotary. Yeah. As the in, <laughs> yeah. as the information age is happening, where certain people who are either queens or teens who grew up both having a wall phone 
And then being exposed to things like the internet. Cradle modem. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Watch war no, games, then you'll see a lot man, of that. Man, I, I, I honestly, I like, coupler. I yeah. like my age. I think it's, it's the best because I have seen us go. I, I constantly feel like I'm living in the future. Like my entire experience is a, is a Jetsons like wonderment, and it gets better every year. I we I get agree. awfuler as a species, but <laughs> the stuff, yeah, I mean, the you, stuff is amazing. <laughs> it does get better and better. Yeah. Um, so a couple of other things on this, uh, as I know you always ask, like on the budget and whatnot. Yeah. What you got? Uh, so this movie couldn't have been that expensive. No, it 6.9 million. Nice. Yeah. This is, this is well nice. under even what indie is today. Yeah, Cause indie great. is like no less than like 20 million. Yeah. Um, 6.9, it made, uh, 7.9 million in the theaters and it was deemed a, a critical failure, but. It is made cult status because it now has a, it's a part of the Criterion Collection, and people of you know of oh, our yeah, generation money was made on yeah, this movie. Though. Yeah, if, more, more more on uh, VHS rentals and and just you know VHS uh, uh, purchases. I think everyone my age group had this on VHS, and yeah. then probably again on DVD, and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now has access to a streaming service that has. Yeah, it. We, I mean, it, we've it, got it on VHS. Oh, it, it continues to make <laughs> we, money. We I'm did, sure. Like we did, like my senior year, like we would go over to my buddy Heath's place, and it was like Swingers and and this. Yeah, tell me more about Keith Swingers, <laughs> huh? <laughs> uh, this movie, the movie Swingers, and uh, oh, 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 the movie something Swingers. Else. That's way less fun. Yeah, I, never, I, I didn't even see this movie until I was in my twenties, and I I lamented it. It's like, why did I not see this? I saw it when it came out. I was yeah. uh, oh, dazed uh, and confused. Or yeah, something. okay. What but was I, I did see Empire I Records. Yeah, yeah, Empire Records was another was another yeah. one for us. Several of the same cast members from mm-hmm. this are yeah. in Empire Records. Um, yeah. now I'd like to juxtapose this against Ferris Bueller, the other one that was the yeah. the close one. I think that this Ferris Bueller is way more fun. But I think this is by far the better movie. I agree. And I'm glad I agree. It won. Yeah. I, I'm glad it won. I'm yeah. glad it won. <laughs> Me um, too. Ferris Bueller is about one snotty kid and his hijinks yeah. that he gets into. Uh-huh. And while it does have the, oh, yeah. A song, lot of it is ridiculously bow, bow. unrealistic. Yeah. This is, it's, it's far more insightful. And I'm, I'm honestly glad it won. Yeah. Me too. The word man in this movie was said uh, 203 times. How many of those were by? Uh... <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, Slater? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. all of them. <laughs> uh, and, then the, the, and then fuck was used man, uh, 59 bullshit, times. Yeah. Man. Now, yeah. it's weird because the studio was, uh, they, they want, they gave it a, a PG-13 rating mm-hmm. and the director screamed and hollered. He's like, we say the, the word fuck like 50 plus times. And when it came out, the studio backtracked and said, oh, we should have given this uh, an R rating. Oh, and you needed to have more nudity in it. And they, like, hammered on the director for not having any new, nude scenes in it. I think that's fine. This was yeah. about high schoolers. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's and I was, after I was found out about that nugget, I was like, these are supposed to be about high schoolers. Now, I know yeah. there are movies that high schoolers do, you know, they get naked in. But this is a very, this is one day, 12 hours yeah, uh, and, and and it's not, and it wasn't, and nothing was supposed to be overtly sexualized. I mean, there were there were comments and and things which, which was funny, but it was not a l- let me see your tits, let me see. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do the the I guess the Porky's route. Yeah, you yeah. know, it was uh, that you know. While I probably would have liked it at the time, fuck what twenty years later, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really glad they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the music for a minute. Every oh. song was spot on. Yep. The theme matched the moment. Mm. The yes. lyrics frequently echoed what was happening on the screen. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, Linkletter uh, kind of, he and Cameron Crowe are a lot alike. Their music pushes the the, the film. And the, the budget for the movie was, was $6.9 million. And one sixth of that went to licensing licensing right. the rights for a lot of the songs, including Bob Dylan's Hurricane, Foghat Slow Ride, Paranoid, Skinner's Thursday's Gone, and Aerosmith's Sweet Emotion, which was in the opening sequence. But they said no to letting it be on the actual soundtrack. Oh, my God. And uh, um, initially, the director went to Led Zeppelin and said, hey, I want to use um, one of your songs. Uh, for this, uh, the Dazed and Confused song, uh, also rock and roll for the movie playing during the end credits. 
Page said yes, um, and uh, Robert Plant said, "Yeah, fuck you. You can't give me enough money to to license it for this movie," which is too bad. Yeah, but that soundtrack, you are right. It is like it is one of the best soundtracks ever put out. I don't know if it's one of the best soundtracks ever put out. I can think of a lot of soundtracks that I like better. I will say it is one of the most apt okay. soundtracks that have that it like was spot on mirroring every, as to what's yeah. happening in, in yeah. the movie. Okay, like those songs, I don't I don't give a shit about any of those songs. Mm-hmm. I, I don't particularly care for them. I grew up listening to songs like uh, all of these songs, so just they were always playing. Yeah, in the me house. too. My but, parents had good taste in music. Sorry. Oh, but, <laughs> for me though, I just noticed like something would happen and a song would kick on, and I'd hear the lyrics. Mm-hmm. So it's like ah, yeah, like when they're well cru- when they're cruising and you, the fog hat slow ride is playing yeah, and they're just yeah, all uh-huh. cruising. Is this where we give the ratings? How many joints would you give this song? How many joints would I give this song? <laughs> well, oh, the man. movie. I would say no. I'd say kegs. kegs. How many kegs out of ten? Is it, is this ten kegs? No, no. How many? Butt smacks. Oh, paddles. Yes. <laughs> How, How many, many paddles? paddles? <laughs> How many paddlings? Uh, let's say out of 10. How many ass paddlings would you give to a freshman? Actually, for just the, this movie, <laughs> I think this is... I think this is almost a near-perfect movie. I'm, I'm going to... This is a 10-paddle. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with a 10-paddle. Yeah. Nathaniel? I have absolutely zero complaints about this movie. It's Seriously. perfect. Yeah. yeah. This is a perfect movie. I it think does exactly is, what yeah. it set out to do. Yeah. And, and 10 out of 10 ass yeah, weapons. Linklater tried to recast uh, this. This is a movie that's almost like a lightning in a bottle movie. And Linklater tried to recapture it by doing Everybody Wants Some, which came out a couple, a few years ago. I, I, it was on Netflix. I took the time to sit down and watch it. It, it was pathetic. It was horrible. The closest thing that I've ever experienced to this movie. Okay. Well, this is a party movie. This yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, this is a slice of life, but it is one of those that falls into the big party. Mm-hmm. The closest thing that I can think of, of a movie that fills a similar feeling for me. It's a little bit zanier, but it still, it fits that niche and that is can't hardly wait. I can agree with that. It's the nineties party senior movie. party. Everybody has, we've just graduated. We're having our party tonight at the big, at the house mm-hmm. who dumped who who's trying to get with who who's, who's going where plans, who's staying who's getting trapped in the bathroom with someone they didn't want to get trapped there mm-hmm. you got the german exchange student who can't speak a word of english except what people are telling them to say it's it the oh and then the old guy shows up at the end and uh but he's not like matthew mcconaughey he's totally lame <laughs> <laughs> it's he's that 35 year yeah. old in the club you know just like yeah. still trying to his shirt open trying to like you know bobbing his head to the side no it was a sad broken down has been football player well, no, I'm saying that's, that's kind of like what, yeah. what i in pictures anyway yeah like. that's the only movie that really comes even close to me to I, I don't have anything i'd measure this against one yeah. thing i really did like uh, it's more insightful yeah uh, movies like this there there are movies that um, little things where people will do a lot of techno babble in. Like you'll see it with movies that have computers. Somebody will say something that sounds really, really neat and it sounds like, like they know medi- what they're talking about. Movies will yeah, it too. sounds like they're talking about it. Now, being being a gearhead, the the scene where McConaughey is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and his buddy are talking about his car and he's running down Everything was spot on with that, and it made me very happy. I was so very <laughs> happy catching it this last time because I, I, you know, I was just getting in the in the cars when this movie came about. Yeah. But yeah, hearing everything was very, very nice. Cool. Well, we're, we're running a bit high on time here. You guys want to take it to the next segment? Yeah, I think yeah. we should. Thank you for letting me close out with that. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll be back in just a moment. All right. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If uh, (laughs) if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, They also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, If you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. There we go. That chest with my man titty. I keep bumping it with my man titty. Man titties. 
Moobs. Moobs. <laughs> Speaking of moobs, let's bring this to the gaming table. We've got... Uh, you know he's going to leave that in. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> we have a shitload of characters. Yeah. In this. So, Dusty, lead us in by talking about them. Normally, I would I would give the you know the 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 actor and then who they're playing and then go through like hey they've also just in case you don't know they've been in X Y and Z just movie too many but this movie has so many people so we're just gonna do a rundown of the people and who they played and then go from there so we're just gonna start at the top of the list uh, Jason London who played uh, the quarterback Pink now one of the London twins mm-hmm. yeah. this is very true there are uh, several sets of twins in this movie. Um, Oh yeah! Oh, cool. Didn't a couple. That. I think at least two sets. Is, is this the alignment section? Is that what we're doing here? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's captain of the football team. Yeah, dude, captain. Whatever. He's got it good. Got it good. Yeah, got yeah. it good. Cheated on his girlfriend. Otherwise, I would have put him as lawful because he was trying didn't, to stay to his conviction. Didn't want. Yeah. To, didn't want to sign the piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like if if he didn't have that scene with the sister, I would have gone for it. Then we have <laughs> Joey Lauren Adams uh, playing Simone Pink's girlfriend. Oh, almost not. She's yeah. almost yeah. an NPC. Yeah. I mean, she pretty Skip. much is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's not a PC. Uh, Milo Jovovich playing Michelle. I will be so upset if you can say that name right and you got it right there and I fuck up on it every time. <laughs> that will really annoy me. <laughs> she was basically an NPC, NPC yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she did She did uh, d- do the, the makeup on the, the Kiss statues. Yeah, she's just a weird, quiet girl. Yeah. I don't know. Which that's... every group had. Yeah. So the the artistic quiet girl, I would. I don't know if she's yeah. an NPC, but I'm not going to argue the point. Okay, and then we have Sean Andrews playing Pickford. Anyway, her alignment is lawful yum. Oh, <laughs> which one? Pickford. Pickford. Uh, uh, he was the one that w- had the house for the yeah, party. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'd. S- it's hard with teenagers again. Well, because, because they have the teenager yeah, line. They're teenagers. So. Chaotic good. I, mean, I think yeah. most everyone go here yeah. is going to be chaotic good. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, you know. The the one I have a couple that I would say are a little more brutal. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Uh, Banyan, yeah, ba- yeah. Uh, yeah. Rory Cochran, pl- who played Slater, the stoner, <laughs> the heavy stoner. <laughs> Oddly, okay, so a little bit of of production you know, on that. He was the only one who really didn't have any long hair. I saw when I was looking at the IMDb uh, mm-hmm. to get some names for for something else. He did not. He doesn't look anything like himself. No. Well, he doesn't look like he did then. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. He, he became an old man. <laughs> like a very yeah. old man. But <laughs> it, it, it was literally the, he got the, they gave him the wig that has the hat on it, mm-hmm. like the $5 yeah. hat wig <laughs> to wear. So yeah, none of, none of that was his real hair. So yeah. Uh, Slater. Slater. Again, chaotic good. Yeah. I mean, he's, he didn't seem bad. The way he breaks the rules are not bad. Mm, true. Yeah. Uh, Adam Goldberg, who played Mike. Mike was Mike was the one that 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 had the the great insight on himself. He didn't go back to the greaser and the like, one went, oh, the, 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 oh, the fight. Um, I want to say lawful because he he knew he was going to lose, but and he, he stood, also he knew, stood up. He, to also, him, he stood up for he also himself. Knew what he had to do, yeah. I, I and he he had pretty strong ethics throughout the whole thing, as did yeah, his, his, his companion. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. So about I'm going to go lawful good on that. All one. right. Uh, and his companion, Anthony Rapp, uh, played, he lawful played Tony. Yeah. yeah. Very lawful good, I think, because he was always like, this initiation, you shouldn't be doing yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he went along with it, but he was very vocal, and this is not, should not be done. Yeah. Uh, and then Sasha Jensen, who played Don. <laughs> the eyebrow kid, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Cro-Magnon kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come, uh, on, come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But I really liked him. <laughs> yeah. He was oh, hilarious. Uh, the David Spade. Yeah. The future no, no, David no, Spade. No, no, no. The one that had the overalls on. He was on the football team. Oh, he, yeah, he yeah, yeah. The eyebrows. Yeah. Like, the yeah. the pokey eyebrows. It was like yeah. a unibrow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, Troy from high school. <laughs> that's you. I was going to say, <laughs> say uh, no. Dave Halleck. That's, that's you. I was going to say Danny Warner. Yeah. That's 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 him. All right. Uh, oh, anyway, Cata good. Yeah. Uh, then we have Marissa <laughs> Ribisi, who is the twin to Giovanni Ribisi, the uh, the actor. Okay. Um, she was the redhead that uh, oh that liked Matthew McConaughey's character with the poofy hair. Yeah, yeah. poofy yeah. hair. They rode around with really bad uh, Anthony Rapp and Adam Goldberg. Uh, uh Cata good. I I almost she NPC. Did, she, she didn't have. Oh no, she had a lot of lines, but um, I don't I don't think she gave me a chance for a moral. She was just chaotic. No, she was like neutral chill. Yeah. 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 Neutral chill. 
We got to come up with like special teenager alignments here. Because, we should. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Spend some time on that. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's just come up with them on the fly. So we got neutral right. chill. Mm-hmm. Michelle Burke, who played Jody, which uh, was? that was that I, she was the one that that uh, Pink kissed at the end in the in the in the forest. The older sister. Yeah, of, the older of, sister uh, of, the young of kid. the kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, she struck me as lawful good. Yeah, I could see that because she was always like, "No, you guys don't worry about it. You're gonna make it through." Yeah, You're she was. Fine. She was kind to the to the people under her while obeying the dictates. She tried to be as good as she could within the confines I'll, I'll of give her, her that. roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She started to develop her own actual alignment. Yeah. <laughs> then we have Cole Hauser, who played Benny, the the redheaded guy. He was kind of a dick. Yeah, yeah. he was kind of a dick. I'd go with <laughs> no uh, wait, but he did throw that kid a beer. Yeah. And Don but was he, upset. But he, that he was threw. always yeah. going. I mean, he was always with, yeah, with O'Banion. With O'Banion yeah. and then the other guy. Yeah. Um, While they were assholes, mm-hmm. I don't know that that makes them evil or even neutral. Okay. Um, I think so. We just want to blanket that everybody is like either lawful or chaotic good. Yeah. Well, well I mean, within with the confines of their culture, of being a dick, th- th- they have to they have to be judged within their culture. Yeah. So I I would say. <sighs> I mean, chaotic neutral is too strong. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe lawful neutral. Do let's you think? Give it, let's, because... give a, let's give him a new one. Uh... Dictine. <laughs> well, I mean, well, there were, I mean, there were classes in high school. Lawful I mean, dude. I mean, dude. Lawful dude. He was lawful he dude. Class. Let's see. What... Yeah. That's true. I mean, they, they were they were they were using their powers not yeah. for good, <laughs> not for good, but for dudeness. For for terrify. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we had Christine Harnos, who played K. K. K? Yeah, K. Who was which, which one was K? I I, I, don't, I don't remember. Her. Yeah, but, NPC. Okay. Uh, yes. Wiley Wiggins, <laughs> who played Mitch the kid. Mitch. Mitch. Uh, Mitch is awkward, awkward always cool. Pick, always yeah, touching yeah, his nose. Awkward, awkward cool. <laughs> awkward, he was cool. awkward. Yeah. Probably has boogers in the hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have his, his friends, uh, Mark Vandermeulen, Esteban Powell, and Jeremy Fox. Uh, Jeremy Fox played Hirschfelder, who was the chubby kid. Uh, and then Carl, who I think... Uh, like and, and, no points in strength, all in charisma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy. Um, yeah. Yeah. But then we move on to Ben Affleck, who played O'Banion. I would say the, that the chaotic, chaotic dick, the, yeah, chaotic chaotic dick, dick. Out of the whole, the flunked chaotic dick. Yes, yeah, he was a dick. Uh, Jason O. Smith, who played Melvin. You know, I gotta bust in real fast. Yeah. I knew two people who repeated uh, a year, and they were both incredibly nice people. Mm-hmm. I've I've never like this this trope of the second year senior usually as being the bully. Yeah, or was, stupid. Yeah, yeah, or or stupid. I've never actually seen that in real life. The two people that I was close to. You know, went to parties and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Who did repeat? Were both incredibly kind people. It, it's usually the people are in that area are usually like victim of circumstance, like something happened, maybe it like was family, a family thing or yeah. medical reasons, and they had to, they just had to maybe do redo a couple classes. Yeah. Or I don't think I've ever encountered anybody that was like held back because they were, you know, they just flunked everything. Yeah. It was usually just because of circumstances. Uh, and then we have Parker Posey playing Darla. God, still yum. Chaotic bitch. Yeah. No, chaotic, chaotic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was awful. I mean, she was Ray she's great. I love yeah. Parker Posey, but she was I mean, she bitch. she owned the fuck out of that character. Oh, hey, could you be God. a bitch? Oh, just, just watch. <laughs> and I'm going to do it with grace, motherfucker. Oh, have you, have you seen Josie and the Pussycats? Yes. She, uh, I think. Because I of a 12-year-old girl. Th- I think that. Her that that's the same person. I think it's just her grown up in that care as that character. Uh, Who else we got? Matthew McConaughey playing Wooderson. Chaotic, cool. chaotic, dude. chaotic dude, chaotic dude, chaotic <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, Cass- no, he was more neutral. There was no chaos. He was laid back. He was cool. He just went with the flow. This is lawful, 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 dude. I was, yeah, I think he was. Just no, because all you gotta do is just L I V I N. Just keep living. <laughs> I think that's neutrality. I think right. he was. I'm, I'm, I'm content to be overruled. Yeah. On. <laughs> uh, and then, and then we have basically another NPC, but Catherine uh, Morris. She was the the girl that uh, Mitch was really into, the sophomore. Yeah, NPC. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then everybody else, just teachers and and you know other. We students. can't talk about it, right? But I, I really, real fast, I really loved their teacher. The uh, the one well, they told us we <laughs> were twenty five and twenty five are only coming back. <laughs> I love him. All right, carry on. That that was good. Every, everybody else is just teachers or yeah. uncredited, or that was that was the bulk of the of the main cast. 
All right. Mm. Well, um, <laughs> where does this going to go? Where, where, where does this story go? This next? one was really hard. I um, I was. I would think so. I think college. It, it would have to go to college. What? Not the end of the summer? Like, no, nah, going back to school. I mean, you could. But it would be more of the same. I don't see it as a story progression as much. I think it would be more interesting to see them in college as as the seniors become the hunted. That's yeah. where I think the story would go. I don't I, you know, I just don't know. This is hard because what this is 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 a slice of life. Mm-hmm. And that's really hard to put on paper. Well, which is why this movie yeah. is so great. Um I'm certainly not of the caliber to write it. But um I don't know. I'm Ideas? thinking that this movie could serve as a, you know, a one shot game that leads into uh, opens a small campaign where we keep slicing back into their lives over the next year of school because hmm. we have concluded a year that we know almost nothing about. But now we have everything we need to set up a story following these characters. Like mm-hmm. we have budding romance. We have is this guy going to actually play football or not? We have did Love they triangle. go see Aerosmith? We have. Where where is this going? To oh, and graduate. We got a guy who's setting himself up with a villain. So you know the the greaser. Is he going to cause trouble for the point. dork? Is well, is Wooderson going to go back to junior college or stay working? Because yeah. he made that comment at the, yeah, at did, the Emporium. Yeah. yeah. And is Parker Posey going to make that girl's life a living, living hell. hell? Like she promised, or is she just going to drunkenly forget? I think Parker forget? Posey should be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Or or the greaser and Parker Posey yeah. getting uh, a little love connection there. Mm. Evil squared. <laughs> What's going to happen with the relationship between the dude and his girlfriend? I'm guessing it's going to die over the summer. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And then you the know, next year is going to be awkward. I don't think he was evil, though. Wait, who? The greaser? or the? Yeah, the greaser. Like, he wasn't bad. I just think he was conflicted. Because he did. He, he wandered by and said something fucking snarky. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I mean, he said something that would have got the attention of making him think he was, that was a cop. That was at a party. Yeah, like, I mean, he gets, yeah, he he's went by and acted like a dick and got called out for it. I don't think that makes him bad. He pressed it a little hard and then he shoved. Um, I mean, the dude had some anger issues. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's a dick. <laughs> I think we have a good setup for what if this were a television show, something like Freaks and Geeks following in uh, a year in the life of these students. Um, that, that was actually done after the movie came out. There was a TV series. It yeah. was Dazed and Confused. Uh, really? what, just what so you about, know, yeah, that about, was done. Uh, it didn't last long. It didn't no, even it was, last a season. Bad. Um, is Kids on Bikes too old for this? Kids on Bikes is very niche, and it's definitely more about adventure. Yeah. Isn't that more like Stranger Things? Kids on Bikes of? could do something like Stranger Things or a Stephen King story or Stand okay. By Me. Because I know we've you know, talked about it a couple of times. Yeah, I've got it. It's a, It's actually a really cool game. What... We want to focus on for a game inspired by this movie is we want to stick to that slice of life. We want conflicts. It's got to be are relationships too. And relationship mm-hmm. driven conflicts. Yeah, it's just high school yeah. drama. Small, immediate, oh, personal, and the most important thing in the world at that exact period of time that matters nothing on the grand scheme of life. Is there a John Hughes role playing game? There almost has to be, isn't there? We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so okay. we, we definitely want to focus on character relationships. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an NPC heavy game. You're going to have, um, I mean, if we're only going to do it with a small group of people, which most gaming groups are yeah. going to be, you might have four, maybe five players for something like this. And each one's going to play a student. You know, if I were to run Dazed and Confused the next year as a game, as like a, as a mini campaign, I'd probably focus on, I'd have everybody in the same grade. It, it just gets a little awkward when people are in different grades. Yeah. So I would have everybody in the same grade. So we'd either play the You'd middle schoolers the, the coming football. in. Yeah, but I was going to say, are you going to stay with the football team? I think it would be more That's interesting or, to go yeah, with the, the middle schools. Okay. Yeah. They definitely have more developed characters. They do. Uh, and they have more yeah. drama. They've already, <laughs> they've already had three years of drama to you know going yeah. in yeah they, okay i, I mean we really that. only actually have two middle schoolers of note that are interesting enough to even be pcs and one of them was very passive and casual and didn't really do much but hang around mm. and then the other guy was just you know coming into his own he might be an interesting character as well but DM he's gonna run be him role playing a lot on his own he's a yeah. side, he's like a side plot character yeah, pretty side much plot character so we'd focus on the high school characters. We or well, we focus on the seniors and 
follow them and see what relationships matter to them. Um, you would have a very NPC heavy game. We would just constantly, we would build out a class. Yeah. We'd sit down, we'd say, okay, where do you sit in this classroom? And we'd map it out. There's a role playing game that does this as part of the game creation mechanic, and it's called Monster Hearts. Mm hmm. Monster Hearts is an apocalypse world based role playing game of teenage paranormal teenage teenage romance. It is a role playing game that takes place in high school where some of the characters are also monsters. Now you can use that literally, as in there's literally a vampire and a werewolf and a banshee and a witch and what I, I don't think to play out. this movie but however <laughs> you can also use it figuratively you can have those like your character is the werewolf but really what that means is that, that your character is driven by rage and you know lashes Obanion. out kind of stuff okay or, i want it to be eyebrow kid that, that looked like werewolf eyebrows to me it you know <laughs> okay you're talking about the physical aspect but if we're going to do something like monster hearts you want to focus more on the the metaphor and I don't think he's that ragey. <laughs> that monster no, I don't was... think would quite work, but it does have a good game setup mechanic where you sit down and it depend it doesn't really matter what grade you're in, the game kind of assumes you're all in the same homeroom. Yeah. And you map out the desks in the homeroom and who sits where. And then you fill the rest of them in. And as you do so, you name these characters. You're like, okay, who's sitting next to you? Oh, you're sitting next to the exchange student. Who really hates them? Oh, that's George. George sits over here. What's George's thing? Yeah. Okay. You kind of build out a relationship map oh, as fucking you. Fucking George. Go. <laughs> Sound cool? Yeah, works for me. I think it would be hard to get away from the paranormal because you'd have to cut that. I think, okay, okay yeah. with losing because... the paranormal, you basically then have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, Monster Hearts can play Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It or has one of the characters. Monster High. You know, yeah, is one of the characters like is called The Slayer. Okay. Uh, Monster Hearts is interesting in that the game changes drastically based on which characters you have. So you got the mm -hmm. Vampire, you got the Slayer, you got, the, or the Chosen One, I think they're called. The Vampire, that the Chosen One, Buffy. the yeah. Witch, the Mortal, the Giles, okay, uh, whatever. You got all these characters that, depending upon who is present in any one game, it vastly changes the way the game is going for example if you just have like the the werewolf the vampire and the human and the witch it becomes a game about all of them interacting with each other if someone says i want to play the chosen well guess what you are now playing buffy the vampire slayer like the whole game yeah, is no going to resolve, that revolve around that character yeah. and it, it takes that into account when it tells you listen this character changes the game but that's not a bad thing it just matters on what kind of game you want to run okay the reason I'm recommending Monster Hearts, at least initially for a little bit, is that relationship system built into it. Your characters start the game knowing each other, having history with each other, having right. opinions about each other, and being able to use those relationships as hard, tangible mechanics. I can I can see that. Yeah, I mean, I can see you can kind of uh, manipulate it to where it's not so much supernatural, but using those elements. And that would that sounds reasonably good and essentially they're called strings your character has or a i have a string on you because uh i know that you really like me or you have a string on me because you read my journal or we have strings on each other because Is that like influence because or? we hooked up at this party this i think it's time. just like not like knowledge like i know yeah, this about you i don't think it's essentially yeah, i don't think it's like yeah. like being like um bound or anything like in vampire or something yeah, like it's that more of a it's 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 more of a tangible metaphor of relationship so you can i'm going to spend that string to get a plus one on my next roll with roll with the help or against you kind of thing it's kind of like to say you have two kids that are that grew up next to each other and they go they go into school and then that one one of them decides to be completely different and then that uh, next one goes hey i know what you are really like so yeah. fucking stop oh no i got it okay monster hearts is a fun game I wouldn't do it for this, though, because, again, it's going to take a lot of effort to strip out the paranormal aspects of it. Underneath it, it's got a nice sub layer. Mm. And I guess you could still do it. You could still use the base mechanics, the string system, the classroom building system, and then strip out all the supernatural stuff and just call it good. Just go from there. Because this is very low key. This is slice of life. These they're not going to go save the world. Yeah. You know? <laughs> One of the big, the, they're going the big to get issue is, do we have beer for the party? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to, you don't need superpowers to do something like that. So instead, I am presenting a game called School Days. 
I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, so have I. By Tracy Barnett. School days, the back year. The, I'll read the back. Grade cards, dating, sports, teachers, parents, friends. It's 7.15 a.m. The first bell rings at about 15 minutes. Where are you and what are you doing? School days. High school role playing. Hmm. It is a game based uh, or heavily inspired by such wonderful movies as Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm -hmm. Right. The Breakfast Club. American Pie. Uh, Even Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's got different like campaign models in the back and one of them is Vampire Honey. But you build... A class. Mm -hmm. You have very basic characters. You have uh, subjects that you're good at, subjects that you're bad at. You have conflict. It's very. You just roll a number of d6s, and you want Mm -hmm. to get a five or higher. I mean, it's a very basic, simple mechanic. Okay. Um, Yeah, it's a small book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is an extremely light, fast-moving game that focuses more heavily on telling a cool story about a situation. Oh no, we got to go buy some beer. So let's talk about some of the. Let's talk about some of the conflicts that happen in this movie. I'm going to go flirt with the sophomore, and I've got <laughs> three different people now dragging me aside, telling me three different bits of advice on how to flirt with her. Right. <laughs> Which one do I use? Roll the dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got to go buy beer, and I'm a freshman. How how do I how do I get the beer? Well, that guy fucking nat twenty. That roll is all. Oh I god, say. yeah. <laughs> That was a critical success. <laughs> that that was that was amazing too. Conflict. You're 18, need, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to escape from the seniors. We just got to play it cool. We got to buy booze. We got to escape from the angry gunman. <laughs> <laughs> I have to win my baseball game. I my conflict is I need to stand up to the greaser and not die. <laughs> like this it's is all, true. Yeah. It's all high school conflicts and high school things. I dig it. What I like is that you're not going on a grand adventure unless that adventure is we all need to pile into the car and go get Aerosmith tickets. Yeah. And then that's a whole other what ensues on the road or what ensues when we get there. Yeah. Which could be a very good, a long, drawn out game session. Yeah. If I were to run a game of this based on Days and Confused, I would want to do it. Pick some scenes over the summer as flashback material, but don't play them out initially. Yeah. Like, have them... In fact, there's a set of playing cards. Well, they're not playing cards, but they're playing card size game tools that I've used called uh, backstory cards. Mm -hmm. Uh, You use backstory cards when you start a brand new game. You can use them to build a history between your group. You set up events, something that we are all attending, maybe uh, different factions that we know about, different people that we know about, and different places okay, and groups or whatever. And then this card is like, this group hates you for some reason. You don't know why, but that player does. Mm -hmm. What is that reason? And so on and so on. You know, it it creates things. The two of you, whenever event is mentioned, you and the player sitting to your left, shut up and okay. get or get quiet why is that or something yeah what i would love to do is use that use those cards to establish what happened during the summer but then use leave them loose leave them open like okay you and her for some reason didn't actually end up going anywhere with that kiss M- mitch you got addicted to alcohol yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> didn't show your up your grades plummeted your grades plummeted and then we would play it out Throughout the year, but we wouldn't go day by day. Yeah, we'd, okay. you know, we'd, we'd play out a scene that happened, maybe a couple scenes in a day. This is going to be a hard night. one. I mean, that that works for it. That this system works for but it. But just getting the game set, yeah. like your 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 hook is going to be the difficult one. Yeah, but well, I like I like that setting. I like this the school day setting. So the way this game builds an adventure is it calls it a group project. A group project, what other games call adventures or scenarios, take place over a set period of time. Most take place during a single school day. Each group project contains a class roster with descriptions of the major NPCs, as well as their motivations, and a basic syllabus that describes the plot. Really hammering down on the school terms in this book. Uh, Yeah, I noticed that flipping through. (laughs) They really doubled down on it. You choose a theme, such as homecoming, spring break, a zombie outbreak, etc., uh, you choose, make up some NPCs that are other students in the group, maybe a teacher or something, give each one a motivation. 
Uh, and then you set a time frame. Uh, this group project will come to its natural conclusion in a day, a week, a month, a grading period. You decide. The easiest thing to do is the party. The big party's coming up. Yeah. Who's going to be there? Who's going with you? Uh, what are you going to wear? Uh, how are you going to get into those pants? That's going to be a conflict mm-hmm. roll. Let's roll yeah. the dice to see if you can actually get those Locate pants pliers. up. Locate pliers. <laughs> Where are dad's pliers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You broke conflict. the tooth off. Yeah. The keg arrived early. Yeah. Ah, uh, shit. You just totally fucked up your convinced dad not to leave roll or convinced dad not to stay a roll. Now you got to find a new place for the party. Where's mm-hmm. this going to go? The parents that were still locked in the 50s but wearing the leisure suit. That was fantastic. <laughs> oh, man, that dad, his gleeful look oh, every time he's he group after group. <laughs> Standing in the door with, like, the, the Superman stand. Yeah. <laughs> this game even comes with a complete sample class roster. I saw that. you that. can yeah. use as a, a setup for your school. Uh, it's even got alternate settings. It's got the saved by the hell mouth, they call it. <laughs> And it's got another one called uh, From Whom the Bell Trolls, which is basically Wizard School Harry Potter. Uh, How the West was fun. So Wild West High School, uh, Mm -hmm. Miss Millie's Learning Wagon. Uh, (laughs) 2101, a school odyssey in space and so on. It looks like it would work. And I'll tell you, honestly, I I don't I don't think I'd play that. I just I'm I'm just I want to kill zombies and kill orcs. Well, I mean. I, I play role playing games for an uh, escapism. I certainly don't want to relive high school. If I look yeah. back at these as the best years of my life, I'm just going to put a bullet. In my I, head. I don't. I well, don't know if I would want to. Well, I don't know if I would want to go XP. back. To, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would want to play a game that would go back and and go through. Because high school was not all that fun for me. You I know, mean, I'll I honestly be honest. had fun. I just didn't. I, I wouldn't want to revisit it. As I would leisure. play this, but I don't play or run Monster Hearts anymore. And there's a reason for that. And it's because I'm an old man. And one of the mechanics is the sex move. Whenever your character has sex with another character in the game, be it a PC or an NPC, depending upon your class, your sex move happens. Yeah. What's your okay. sex move? Your sex move is some kind of a power. Uh, for example, when I think the witch has sex with someone, she gains strings on them by by learning more about them actor when the vampire has sex with someone they gain some power over them or or anyway there, there's all there's when you have well, sex with someone okay how that often does that come out in the game not as well, often as we'd like in high it's school it's a mechanic okay which means players try to make it happen as often ah, as okay. they can just like in, in high school fiction. okay and at first i was like you know this is kind of fun and then i was like i just I'm tired of role playing kids having sex. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, that I, needs to go into our super cuts. Right there. <laughs> I, I want that it, as a it makes tone. me feel dirty and creepy as yeah. a you know as a scary looking adult white male. I don't want. What did you do last night? Oh, we all pretended to be high schoolers fucking each other. Well, I'm going to call the cops now <laughs> <laughs> and let them know that you just said that. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think you can even say those words in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I, I get that other people love this game. It's We're no longer Alabama. for me. It's cool. just, yeah, I, I love sex in my adult games. It's not in my teenage games anymore. Yeah. I will, when that happens for me, I am just much more comfortable with the camera drifting over to the fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to describe it. No. Nope. We're just going to nod and thumbs yeah. up. Yep, that happened. And, and now we're back. Day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And on that note. <laughs> yeah, that's here's the thing. Like this this is a fantastic movie. Yeah, yeah. But it's not altogether a happy movie. It's it's not altogether a feel good movie. It's it's one that you can see yourself in, but the things that you remember, it also it doesn't bring back just the good parts about high school. Mm, it brings back the bad parts too. Mm-hmm. And I just I I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't game this movie as as great a movie as it is. Okay. Some people game for escapism. Yeah. That that some, would be me. Some people, other people probably yeah. do it for different reasons. Games to explore is issues. They're like, you know, I my brain's in a weird space and I want to play that out. Or uh I want to game for an emotional impact kind of thing. Some people yeah. game because they want a game that will actually make them cry. Uh some people want different experiences. So high school games of a slice of life that isn't a silly adventure not for everyone yeah 
Like, I, I don't look down on it, and it does look like a well-thought-out game. I just don't think I would personally have fun playing it. I was hesitant when I was pitching high school movies for us to even talk about one in the first place yeah. because of things like that. Mm-hmm. I think I think we would have had a completely different discussion if this had been Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller would have been a comical adventure. Yeah. We could have yeah. still used the same game. It would, it would have been a com- it would have 180 been a degrees out. Different yeah. Approach. Yeah. yeah. Would you play Ferris Bueller, Matthew? No, I would have no interest in that either. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I suppose I, I game for greatness for, uh, Harry for the medieval. honor. Ferris Bueller wasn't <laughs> I great absolutely awesome. do. <laughs> Ferris Bueller was great, but Ferris Bueller was also a douche. Yeah, Ferris I Bueller mean, was a little shit. He yeah. was charming, but he was a little he, shit. He put all of his points in like, in, in the charisma. Yeah. So, uh, um, he was a bard. Yeah. 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 He was a total bard. Um, or a rogue, but. Um, no, no, I, more I, I, wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't play that either. When when I play, it's for 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 true good or true evil. I now have an idea for a mini campaign of Darren Feller's Big Day. <laughs> Darren Feller's. <laughs> the, the great bar, Darren Feller. <laughs> <laughs> it's here to teach you to chill, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. I think we got it. I think yeah, we, got uh, it. we have a thing coming up. We do. Ba-ba-ba-bum. So we missed last time uh, due to some scheduling conflicts and some sickness. So what we are going to do is put out voting next for our next two episodes. Two, two, uh, and uh, the one uh, coming up is going to have a very short, very short. Yeah, get your time. votes in. Yeah, we're going to be only leaving the votes up for the next one for a week because we record in two weeks and we got to get ready for it. But then we're also going to, at the same time, put up the extended vote for the one for two weeks from that. And just to make things interesting, we decided that because it's only going to be a short vote (laughs) and we want people to have a real personal buy-in, our next movie theme for our next episode is... I'm not saying it. Kevin Costner. Yeah! Yeah! You two can fuck off. So we got four movies that we're going to have you vote on. and We got a week to do it. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, The Postman, uh, Water World, and 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Yeah. Whoever wins, Matthew loses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not wrong. What was, what's the line you always quote from Robin Hood? The, the, when I killed the sheriff's man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you? Did you? You fucking hick. <laughs> well, speaking of killing the sheriff's men, coming man, up after that. After he that. the sheriff's man. <laughs> we're going back to classic westerns. Classics. We're talking anything, hopefully, the 80s or older. Uh, wow, wow, much older. Wow. We are starting with the Magnificent Seven on this list. We've also got The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Silverado, and Shane. <laughs> Pick up the gun. <laughs> I'm honestly out of that group. Uh, as much as I like the the original Magnificent Seven, uh, I'm I'm actually hoping for Silverado. I really like Silverado. I'm hoping for the good, the bad, and the ugly because it's one of the that is a it's great an amazing Western, yeah. film. Yeah, it's oh God, and that music. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's all we got today. So yes, remember we got one week on the Kevin Costner, and we got like three weeks, two weeks, two weeks on the Western, yeah, two yeah. weeks on the Western, and then we're back to our normal rotation. Two weeks every time. Yeah. So yeah, vote, 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 vote. Get out there and vote. Like your life matters. Let's let's all as Americans vote for something that truly matters. Yes. Let, let's turn <laughs> a Kevin Costner film. <laughs> Fuck, man. Some days you can't win. <laughs> ah, oh, good. I'll end on that. Yay. All right. Hi. Don't vote the Kevin Costner. Nobody vote for anything. <laughs> I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, 
with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.